<laughs> Are you ready? What's up guys, it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and today I'm gonna show you how you can put a robot arm on yourself just like this. So you might say, well, I don't have a green screen. Well, that's not a problem, because what I've done is I've gone ahead, filmed the footage, and keyed it out for you, and put it for free, a link in the description, along with a robot arm model, so that there's no excuse why you can't smash that subscribe button and follow along with this video. Stumbling over my own words, let's go, it doesn't matter. I can't believe that I'm finally filming this video. People have been asking for this for about or a little over a year now and I did not want to put myself through the pain of doing this. I had to record this tutorial four times until I finally got it right, but I did and I think I've come up with a super easy way to do this. So let's stop talking about it and get into the tutorial. So I'm here inside Blender and the first thing I'm going to do is hit A, X and I'm going to go ahead and delete everything. And we're going to go up here to this little plus icon and we're going to go to VFX and we're going to go to motion tracking. So I'm here inside the motion tracking tab and the first thing I'm going to do before I bring my footage in is I'm going to go up here to the output properties and left click. I'm going to change this over to 3840 by 2160 because I shot my footage in 4K and I'm also going to change the frame rate to 23.98 because I know that that was the frame rate I used when I filmed my footage. If for some reason your computer or laptop can't handle the 4K settings of Blender, you should be fine to leave it on 1920 by 1080. Next, I'm going to go up to my render property settings and go all the way down to color management, left click the arrow, and just change this from filmic over to standard. So now we're ready to bring our footage into Blender. So the first thing I'm going to do is open, and I'm going to navigate in my computer to where I have the footage saved. So I'm going to go ahead and select my footage and I'm going to bring this into Blender. And you can see that we have our footage in here, but before we start tracking, I'm just going to hit set scene frame. So right now you'll notice uh, that it's 1 to 250, which is the default in Blender. So I'm going to hit set scene frames and this clip is only 166 frames, so it will automatically set the timeline to 166 frames. And next I'm going to hit prefetch and what prefetch will do is it will load the footage into Blender's memory so that playback is very smooth. So I'll go ahead and hit prefetch. So now that the footage is loaded into the memory, I'm going to hit play and watch it through. You can see everything's moving very smooth there. And now's a good time to probably save your project. So now that we've saved our project, we're about ready to start tracking. The first thing we're going to do is just check normalize and this will normalize light intensities while tracking so that way we get a little bit more accurate of a track. And I'm also going to change this here from location over to a fine. Now before we just start adding track markers and tracking, we need to go over here to track and left click track. And I'm going to hit this drop down arrow under objects and we don't want to track the camera because the camera, it's a tripod shot. So we want to just track the motion of this object, which in this case, the object is um, my arm. The, so I'm going to hit this little plus icon here and now we will be tracking it for an object. So in order to add a track marker in Blender, it's pretty easy. You just go to the point you want to track and holding down control and left click, you add a tracker. So, and the same rules apply, you can hit G to move, S to scale, R to rotate. Um, in this case, we're just going to scale this up a bit so that Blender can track this mark here. And if you scroll in real close um, on some of these, you'll see there's a little black dot in the center. It's a little hard to see now, but I did mark these with black dots. So if possible, try to line up your track markers with the black dots. And in Blender, you can track frame by frame by hitting this one to track forward and this one to track backwards. So I could just track it frame by frame like this, or there's these arrows down here. This one will track your whole clip forward and this one will track the whole clip backwards. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll out and track the whole clip forward. And you can see it froze up a bit there. The bigger you scale your track marker, the slower it can take, but it will usually tend to be a bit more accurate. So we can see there that that track marker stuck on the whole way through. So I'll go ahead and hit left click this lock to lock that. So now I can't scale it or grab it or move it, which is what we want. And we can go ahead and I'll select this point right here. So control left click to add the track marker, just scale up like that. And I'm going to track backwards this time. see it's holding on pretty well there. So I'll go ahead and lock that track marker as well. 
And when tracking a camera in Blender, you need at least eight good tracking points. Uh, when tracking an object, you don't need as many. But we're going to go ahead and track as many as we can because the more information Blender has, the better it will do. So I'm going to left click that point and scale this up. And we'll go ahead and track this point forward. Don't be afraid to scale your track markers up a bit. You can see, I think it just fell off there. Yeah, it just fell off. So we're gonna go ahead and just delete this marker. And I'm just gonna start over from the beginning because I wanna see what happened there. So control left click, scale up, we'll make this one even bigger. And we'll go ahead and track forward. It looked like it jumped to the other one before. Let's see if it does it again. I guess it's not doing it this time. Oh, there it did it again. So that's it, frame 70 it looked like. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the track. I'm going to go back to frame 70. Or it looks like 69 is where it jumped. So frame 65 will go to. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to track forward frame by frame here. So it's jumping there. So that's not right. So I'm going to hit G to move this back to right about where it was. And I'm going to go ahead and track forward by frame. And now let's see if we can just track this the rest of the way forward without it jumping. It's really strange why that did that. But if it happens, sometimes you'll have to ma manually move the track back. You can see it did it again there at frame 158. So I'm going to go back to frame 157. So 158 is where it jumps. So let's go to 157. I'm just going to hit G to give it a new point and then track forward one frame and we're going frame by frame. So it looks like it just got confused there. So just by hitting G to add that a new reference point there for it, it tracked it the whole way through. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that track marker as well. And if at any point you want to see how your track markers are doing, you can just hit play and you can see that they are all staying in the same spot, which is what we want. Now there's a little bit wacky movement there from that one, but it might be okay. So I'm going to scroll in again, and we're going to add, let's add another track point down here, hitting control, scale this up, and I'm going to go ahead and track this one forward, and just hope that nothing weird happens with this one. And it lost its spot, so I'll just hit S to add a new point in, and continue to track forward. And it lost it again, I'll just hit S, and I'll track forward. So that one looks like it made it through, so I'll go ahead and lock that. And let's try and track this point down here. So I'll hit Control, left click, and just scale this up nice and big. And let's go ahead and track backwards. And this part can be a bit tedious, but the results do look really awesome when they're done. So it's definitely worth it. And this one, well, spoke too soon. So I'll hit S just to reset that point there and go ahead and track this one backwards. And it did that thing again where it jumped. I'm not sure what frame that was, so we'll just have to go back. Let's scroll back here. So it looks like frame 54. So I'm just going to hit S to add a new point of reference in there. And just I'm going to go frame by frame, track backwards. Okay, it should be good. So I'll just track the rest of the way back. And it lost it there. I'll just hit S to add in a new point of reference, track backwards. Dum -de -dum -dum. Um, all right, so it made it. So I'll go ahead and lock that, and I'm just going to hit play. just want to see how these did. So that's not looking too bad. I think it's uh, we might just roll with these five here for an object track. So I'm going to hit A to select them all, go down to solve, and I'm going to hit tr I'm going to try tripod since we filmed this on the tripod, and, and then I'm going to hit solve object motion. And you can see the solve error up here is 7.83, which is pretty bad technically. Um, it, technically, you want it to be one or below in Blender to, for a good uh, solve. But watching these back, I don't see anything too crazy. None of them are jumping way too out of whack, minus maybe this one up top here. So I think that this actually... I'm gonna try and roll with this and let's see what we get. And normally, if your track markers, like you, I can see here that these are sticking onto my arm pretty well. They're not like jumping. Sometimes you'll get a track marker like we saw earlier, that one that was jumping all around. If that's happening, 
then you're gonna have problems. But this just might work. So we can go scroll down here and I'm gonna hit set up tracking scene. And if we go out into our layout, we can see here we have a camera and a light and all this stuff. So if I look through my camera and hit play, you'll see that it looks like this. And what we wanna do is we wanna orient this right so that it's not just facing in like a random direction. So I'm gonna select my camera and hit N and, and I'm just gonna zero out the location so that the camera snaps to the middle. And I'm also gonna just real quick select these three items and just delete them because we don't need them. We just really need this camera. So selecting the camera again, I'm gonna make the rotation 90 on the X and I'm gonna zero it out on the Y and the Z just so that our camera is facing something a bit more familiar. And then selecting the camera, I'm just gonna hit G and Y and move it back like this. And now we can look through our camera. And if I hit play, we can see our footage. So I'm gonna to go to frame one and I'm gonna go back up to my motion tracking tab and I'm gonna hit A to select all of these points. And then if I scroll up, I'm gonna hit link empty to track. And now if I go back into my layout, you can see I have a bunch of empties here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these empties and just scale them down so that they're a bit more uh, same size. Looks like I missed one there. Scale these down like that, just so I can see them a bit better. And I, damn it, I missed this one again. So I'll scale that down. So now all these empties are more of a normal size. And if I hit play, you can see that they are sticking right onto the arm. And we can see we have some movement that resembles something like real life. And I can also go out of my camera mode. And if I hit play, you can see these empties are moving. Now this one here might be problematic. Uh, remember when we were tracking that, I think that was the problematic one, but we'll find out shortly. So now's a great time to save your project again. And we can also go ahead and select these foreground and background folders and just delete them because we don't really need them. So now it's time to add in our robot arm, which I've provided the keyed out footage and the robot arm. And you can get those for free if you just go into the description and follow that link and you can download them and use them in the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit File, Import, FBX, and I'm gonna grab my robot arm and just hit Import, FBX. And the robot arm is here, so I'm gonna just scale it up to something a bit more natural and just move it into place roughly. And I can also go into my top view, and just, it's good to make sure you're on frame one when you're doing this. And I'm going to my top view because I'm going to match these up with the empties because I don't want my arm to be out here or back here. I want it to be roughly aligned with the empty. So I'm going to rotate it, hit G, and go back, look through my camera mode, and hit R to rotate it the right way, scale this up. And don't worry about the arm and the sock. We're, there's a method I've come up with to fix this, and we'll get to that in just a second. So I'm just going to focus on roughly lining up the robot arm, and you can zoom in a little bit gonna roughly line this up to something that looks relatively normal and natural. And now might be a good time to actually get rid of the sock arm just so we can better see what we're doing. So what I like to do is if you remember, I provided the free footage with this and this is where my favorite images as planes comes into play. So I'm gonna hit shift A, image, images as planes, and I'm gonna grab this footage and import images as planes. And we'll go ahead and hit the drop down arrow and change it to texture. And I'm gonna hit one for front mode and looking through the camera, we're gonna hit S and scale this up and line it right up with the footage so that everything matches up. And you also just wanna make sure that it's aligned with the empties, which in this case it is. And now you can see that the robot arm is right on my arm, which is exactly what we want. However, when we render, we will be able to see our background footage through the camera, which we don't want since we brought the images plane in. So I'm gonna go and hide the images as planes for a second, go to my camera setting, and under camera down here, I'm gonna turn off background images. So now we can go ahead and turn back on our images as planes and make sure you enable it and render again. And what we need to do now, we can hide this robot arm, tap into edit mode, 
So we'll left click and subdivide and we'll just scale this up to something like this. And now we can hit, and now we can just face, and now we can select these vertices right here that we don't need, hit X and delete them. And you can see it deleted a bit too much, so we might wanna use face select mode. So three for face select mode, select the faces you don't need. In this situation, I'm actually gonna hit Control R and add another loop cut here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just delete these faces that I don't need. Something like that's not too bad. And we can go ahead and add our robot arm back in. So I'm gonna select the robot arm here and go to my constraints tab down here. And I'm gonna add an object constraint. So I'm gonna add an object solver. So I'll left click that. And I'm gonna make the object be the object. And you can see it jumps way out of place. I'm gonna hit set inverse. And for the camera, I'll just select the camera. And now when I hit play, you can see that the robot arm is stuck to my arm. So we can see some of this sock in the background, and if I turned off my robot arm, that's because we didn't cut out enough of our footage. So I'll hit tab to go into edit mode, and I'm just gonna select all these faces here, hit X and delete the faces, so that it looks like this. So now, when I go back from the beginning and turn on my robot arm and hit play, you can see that the robot arm is stuck very nicely to the footage. So guys, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing content and videos just like this. Like this video and leave a comment and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.